And then lastly, we have Ring Central meetings. So Ring Central meetings is technically your third conference option. Okay, so far we've only talked about three-way conference calling through the Polycom um, dialpad or from the dialpad on the on the desktop application. We've talked about the conference bridge, right? That has up to a thousand seats, and the Ring Central meetings uh, actually allows you to set up video conferencing. So that's actually what I'm in right now. I'm sharing my screen. I can share my webcam at the same time if I wanted to, and so can your customers. And you can set up your own Ring Central meetings. Okay. I don't know what the exact limit is when it comes to your participants. You can check with the admins to see what that is. But if you ever need a scenario where you're going to need to share your screen and or your webcam or your customers need to, every single one of you have a license to create your own meetings. Okay, so you can go in here. You can schedule them right from here within the Ring Central app, but you can also do it from Outlook itself. Okay, so Microsoft Outlook has some integrations built in. Let me see if I can pull that up really quick. So let's head on over to the Outlook so you guys can see how you can book it from Outlook. So this is actually the preferred method that we use here at Ring Central is to book it right from Outlook. So here, I'm gonna go to my Home tab and you can go in the top right-hand corner and click Ring Central and you can schedule a meeting right from here. Okay, if you're on a Mac, if you're on a PC, it'll be further to your left here. You'll see a Ring Central icon that allows you to schedule your meetings. Depending on your platform, Outlook looks a little different between the platforms. Just click on the one that's respective to you. And right from here, I can schedule the meeting. Now, one thing to note, Ring Central meetings still needs to be running in the background and logged in, okay? If you are not logged in and you click on that button, it'll actually ask you politely to open up Ring Central meetings, okay? Why is this important? Well, when you have Ring Central meetings running in the background, it pulls the information from our servers using that client, right? And here it's put together a meeting invite for me to send out, and I can set up everything I need right from here. So I can set up who the recipients are. You can see that for every meeting, it generates a brand new link to join the meeting. This number is not a phone number. This is what's known as a uh, meeting ID, right? The randomly one is created every single time you create a meeting. Um, everything that they need to join the meeting is down below. And on the right-hand side, I have some settings that I can set for my meeting. Okay, so I can set things like, does my camera turn on as soon as I join a meeting? Does your customer's voice uh, camera turn on? right as they join a meeting. Notice that those are off. That would freak most people out, so that is off by default. But other things like audio options, everything is enabled, join before host is enabled, things of that nature, okay? You'll notice here under the meeting options, there's an option that says force include join URL in the location field. What's that talking about? Well, that um, meeting ID I told you about, um, it's in your email, it's right here, but it also creates a location field in your Outlook invitation as well and puts it here as well. So no matter what, your customer should be able to to easily see that link, okay? And then come day of your actual meeting, so let's say you book this, you put it together, it will show up in your Outlook calendar, so you can see I have plenty of those meetings set up. But to actually initiate the Ring Central meeting, you're actually gonna do that through Ring Central meetings itself. So you're gonna go to meetings at the very top bottom of the app. This is literally what I do every single morning. I look at my calendar, on my Outlook, and then I proceed to meetings. And then you can see all my meetings for the day. So I had a 9 a.m., I had a 1 a.m., I had a 2 p.m., and today we had a 3 p.m. training. I simply hover my mouse over this, press start, and it'll jump me right into that meeting, okay? So you basically can schedule it entirely from within Microsoft Outlook, but do make sure meetings is running in the background, and obviously come day of your meeting, you have to initiate it from Ring Central meetings itself. The best part about Ring Central meetings is your customers do not need to be Ring Central customers, okay? You can invite grandma if you want to, she can join perfectly fine. The only person that's required to be a Ring Central customer are the people hosting the meetings, right? So every single one of you are hosts, you have licenses, you can create your meetings at will. Okay, so you can invite coworkers, but you can also invite anybody that you wish. So this is the Ring Central meetings application, uh, and we are on a live call here where I am actually utilizing the recording feature here. Uh, and let me actually change to annotate so I can have a spotlight. All right. So once you're on a live uh, Ring Central meeting, uh, this is going to be the client and uh, the options that you'll have while you're on here. Uh, so you'll be able to utilize things like our screen share functionality, like I'm doing right now. So if I click on that screen share option, you'll see a few different options here for me. So I can pick and choose the desktop that I'm sharing uh, with my meeting attendees, 
We have a whiteboard functionality uh, where two people can collaborate that way. I can go ahead and cast my mobile device either uh, via AirPlay or uh, from a cable plugged into my PC itself. Uh, I can also pinpoint specific applications uh, that I have up and running on my computer. Close that out. Uh, when you're dialing into a Ring Central meeting, you will have a few different options. So if I pop this open for you guys, you'll see here, I can either call into the meeting myself, I can utilize my computer audio, I also have the option for the system to call me, uh, and I can preset the number uh, that the system calls me at as well. Here I'm already c connected to the audio, so I have the option to hang up the call and dial in from a different option if I, if I needed to later down uh, the line. You'll also have full HD video functionality. Here you can see uh, I don't have the video uh, uh, turned on right now. So at any time I can come over and start the video and you guys will see me here now. Uh, again, full uh, HD video quality and I can go ahead and stop that video as well. Uh, once you're on an active call, you can invite other people to a call if you needed to. You have a few different options here. Uh, so attendees can dial in from a room system as long as that's H323 or SIP compatible. Uh, they can go ahead and dial in that way. You can send uh, an email uh, invite from the meeting itself utilizing these email clients uh, or just copy the URL or the entire invitation from the meeting itself. Pop that into a, an email and send that along. You can also um, go ahead and invite them and have the system call them so that they're invited from uh, the phone. I can come over to my participant list, pop that out, and see who's exactly on my call. Uh, and you can see here when I hover over these names, because I am the host, I can do things like mute somebody. I can rename myself uh, if I wanted to as well. And over here, I have the option to unmute Matt if I needed to. And I also have a more option here. So I can either uh, chat with him directly from this uh, menu. I can make him the host, make him a co-host, allow him to record uh, the call or put him on hold or even kick him out of the meeting if I needed to do something like that. You'll also see uh, while I'm looking at the participants that uh, I can see that, you know, I do not have my uh, video portion turned on and I can see that Matt is muted and he does not have his video portion turned on as well. Once either of those changed, the system will show you that uh, once they uh, have changed their status there. Um, while you're on a call, you will have a few different options over here in the bottom. Uh, prompts here. So as as the host, I could ask questions and anybody that's attending my meeting can answer yes or no to a question. They can tell me to go slower or go faster if they needed to. They also have the ability to do things like thumbs up or thumbs down a, uh, a question or a conversation, clap, things like that. You also have a more uh, option down here where again, I can do things like mute everybody uh, on the meeting itself, uh, lock the meeting, things like that. Uh, just going back to the chat functionality, you do have this button down here. I can pop this open, which will bring a, up a external chat uh, box here for me. And you'll see, I can chat everybody within the meeting. I can also drop this menu down and chat Matt directly, and nobody will see that. It'll just be a private conversation between Matt and I. And I do wanna note, uh, while you're on a uh, Ring Central meeting, uh, if you're having a meeting with somebody external to the company, they do not need to have the actual client locally downloaded on their computer. They can uh, just join via web browser if they wanted to. Uh, and the browsers that are supported, uh, Chrome, Safari, uh, Microsoft Edge, Internet Explorer, um, uh, Firefox, pretty much all of the main uh, uh, web browsers that are out there. 
So just speaking to uh, the additional options that you have here, again, I can go ahead and pause my screen share if I needed to. I can annotate by using this button up here, which will pop out an external uh, menu where I can pick and choose if I wanna utilize text. I can draw, and if I click on that draw option, I have a few different options to um, change my cursor if I needed to, make an X, things like that. Um, I can utilize the spotlight functionality to draw people's attention to a specific place on the screen, or the arrow again to say, you know, here, look here. Uh, again, I can even erase uh, options as well or clear all my drawings. Uh, and you can undo and redo things as well. And say you made annotations to a, a screen or a screen share that you would like to save, go ahead and save that. Uh, and then that'll locally save to your computer. The last option we have here is the remote control option. So if you're doing a screen share with somebody on the IT staff, this uh, you could utilize this option to go ahead and give keyboard and mouse control to somebody specifically, or just accept their request if they asked for remote control of your system. And then our more option, uh, again, I can just do things like disable attendee annotation, or uh, go ahead and uh, utilize the full screen uh, share of my monitor so that the meeting takes up the entire monitor.